Hey guys, welcome to this plumberparts.co.uk video, very echoey. I'm gonna show you how to fit this sexy ass radiator. It's the type of video that's gonna show you how to fit sexy radiators. Remember, subscribe to us by clicking on the link that's appearing right now, and also follow us on Instagram, Snapchat by doing the code, Facebook and Twitter. Anyway, I hope you enjoy the video, and hold tight. Plumberparts.co.uk, honest reviews and advice. Right then guys, thanks for popping along. Firstly, I just wanna say, this radiator is Brilliant, I'm really, really pleased with it. A lovely red rail colored rad with matching red wall brackets and also matching steel inserts that go into it. And also, you wouldn't believe it, I've never had this from a radiator supplier before, but some touch up paint. And this reminds me quite a bit of the Airfix model I made when I was a kid. I will show you quickly how I piped this radiator up in the end, but what I wanna show you is how we measure out and mark and drill our brackets, okay, for types of radiators that aren't normal. I am going to be filming another video soon about how to hang a radiator because to be honest I haven't really done this subject on Plumber Parts for three or four years so I thought that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to return to it, alright, that's what I'm going to do. So number one, let me just show you the job that we're on here. I moved this beast out of the way. We've got two pipes here, these are our flow and returns, they've been first fixed because we didn't know what size radiator we were going to put in when the first fixed pipes were going down. So I thought, right, I'll just put them in like that, and then later on, I can nicely bring them up to where I want them for the radiator. So that's number one. Also, they have been, should have been first fixed, roughly central to the bottom of this little window we've got here. Like most of us want our radiators underneath the window, and then in that case, you want them underneath the center of the window. Basically, wherever you want the radiator, the first thing you want to do is figure out where the center of the radiator is. Now, I want it underneath this window here. We haven't actually got our our board on here yet, as you can see. So I'll just pull my tape out. So that's uh, 1045 one, mil. Divide that by two, and I'm gonna make my little mark there. I'm happy that we're not gonna be able to see that. And then what I'm gonna do is that mark, I'm just gonna strip, elongate down here. I'm just gonna mark down here, out of the way, okay? I'm gonna go a bit further down as well. And would you believe it, that is bang on center of those two pipes here. So we've got a little center line there now. Right, so this is the radiator we want to fit, obviously, as you can see. And this is the back of the radiator here. When we actually look at the brackets for this rad, we're going to notice that the brackets sit under there like so. You've got two at the top, two right down here at the bottom. This is easier for you guys to do. Just take your measurements now and sketch out somewhere. Unfortunately, I've got this lovely floor here that I can sketch on exactly what the radiator dimensions are. So for a start, from bottom to top, it's 440, this one is. So we've got our radiator here like that. We know now that our height from top to bottom is 440 on this rad. We know that our width is now exactly 400 across. Now we want to get the width of these two here. So that's from here to here, 245. Those bits between there is 245. Now, later, I'm gonna to wanna to put my bracket in line with that. So we divide 245 by two, so that's 12.25 millimeters, okay? So it's a very, very small amount. And we can just make sure of that as well. It is exactly that. We've got our center line on the wall. We know now how far to measure out from each side. That's 12.25 millimeters. So let's do that first. So I don't know if you can see it, but our center line is just here. So we know if we measure out 12.25, so that's 12.25 is just here. I usually just get, I just scratch a little bit in like that, okay? And the same with this side, 12.25 is just there. And then just make that a bit better with your, with your pencil. And if you wanna make sure you've got that right, you should be able to measure this all the way across and get the reading we had a, a minute ago, which was 245 mil, okay? So we know that's exactly right. What you wanna do now is just get your spirit level, Make sure it's level at the top, make sure your bubble's in the center at the top here, and just make a little mark there. And then we'll just get this one here, make a little mark there. So now we know, in a minute, when we come to it, where our sti sticky out bits for the radiator itself are actually going to be drilled. This is quite an unusual rag, because you've actually got left and right hand uh, brackets for this. The next thing we want to know is how far, how high up do we want the radiator to be? Now there's a few ways you can figure this one out. I mean, if you've got really high skirting on here, uh, I don't know what we're going to be putting on here, then you sometimes go off the floor height. In fact, more often than not, you're going to go off the floor height. But a lot of the time, people actually come off the height of, from the bottom of the windowsill. Now, I kind of work with the mantra that you want to be roughly, the top of the rad wants to be a minimum of 50 mil 
from the bottom of the window sill, otherwise it just looks like it's cramped up underneath. Obviously, when I measured this radiator a minute ago, because I've got all my dimensions right there in front of me on the floor, I know that this radiator is 440 mil high. So, I mean, sometimes it's more of a matter of about I, 440 mil is gonna bring that up to about there. That is pretty much perfect, that there. Sometimes I'll measure something and I'll look for something on the wall that's part of the wall. It prevents me from making a mark on the wall. You could use a marksman pen, which means the mark rubs off, but often you don't have one on there. So I'm just gonna go on this little tiny dot here. And then I'm gonna put that just on there. There's the dot I've got. And I'm gonna go 440 down. And there's my 440 there. So I might just go a little bit lower. The thing is, is you can make these adjustments now because all these little marks we're making on the wall behind us are invisible. You're not gonna be able to see it. So once we've got that mark on there, pop our spirit level on again. Make sure it's level. So you make sure our spirit level is level and make sure it's on our bottom mark that we've got in our center line. And we just run that over to this one here and this one here. And then we know we've got our bottom threshold there of the radiator, okay? So the next thing we wanna do is find out about the heights of our brackets, where they wanna be, and also how far away they want to be from each other, top to bottom. This is how we do it. On a radiator like this, it's difficult for you to do. It's not as easy as normal rads, because obviously a normal radiator will have a big bracket like this that it just sort of slots onto, and the height is already defined for you. With these radiators, it's not quite that simple. For a start, we've got a hidden away area just here that this sits on like that. Now, the thing we wanna make sure of is that we know that the bottom of this rung here sits into the bottom of that. And we know that that's the same for the bottom as well. So what you need to do firstly is measure from the bottom of this rung here to the bottom of that rung there, which is 351. 351, and I'm just gonna write that down yet again on my little bit here, 351. And I'm gonna measure that out again just to make sure, 351. Also what I'm gonna do is just see where, when this bracket is sat flush, and we know that it's up against the wall, where does the bottom of that bracket come? As I'm looking at it, I can just see it from above. You kind of do this by eye, and I'm just gonna measure between the bottom of the bracket, so that is 10 mil. 10 mil from the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the radiator. We know where we want the bottom of our rad, because we've just marked it on here, and we know that we wanna go 10 mil down. Just like so. We'll get our spizzy level yet again. Now we're ready to actually do our first mark. So like I said a minute ago, this line is the bottom of the radiator. This was the difference that we measured a minute ago, so this has got to be the bottom of our bracket. We then get our bracket that we want with the internal holes on it so they're hidden. And we bring down our bracket in that line with that line there, and also in line with the line there. And then we just get our pencil. And there we go, we know exactly where to drill now. Right, the walls that we've just gone into, really old school pulley walls, they're gonna ha be a bit happier. Put some actual really, really strong fixer foam in. Pop your, your plug in like that. And then even after that, I'll pop a little bit more in, just right through into the plug itself. This is a tip I've learned the hard way, I'm afraid, because it's not easy to get good fixings in these walls. Literally, just give it a few minutes now, just let this dry out. So while they're setting, we know that we've got the measurement between the top and bottom brackets as well. So while they're doing that, we can measure that one out. And we know that that was three, five, one, okay? I can almost do it from my bottom mark here. Where's my tip measure? Measure up three, five, one from that little mark we've got there. A little nick, and just measure that again. Measure one. And I'll even just check the radiator again, just to make sure. So all I need to do, get my spirit level yet again, get it up like that, make sure my bubble's in the middle. We've got our center line then for our top bracket. Do the same over this side. You won't need to do the same measurement from the bottom here to the top there, because obviously we're going on levels here. Everything needs to be level, otherwise the radiator is gonna look on the wonk up against the window, which is not what we want. So we're just gonna get that down like that. And we also know that our bottom line we've already done, we've done with the spirit level, we know that's level as well. So there we go, we've now got our next set of brackets up here to drill. So pop them in like so, line them up again. You never know, you might get a better fixing on this one. Da, da, 
like that. So yeah, this fixer foam stuff is amazing for plugs in funny wall. If you've just got the time, I really recommend you use it. If you're going into like lime mortar, horrible pooey walls, if you get it on your fingers, it's not gonna come off for weeks. For some reason, it seems to just wanna be part of your life for, for the rest of your life, which is, which is nice. So there we go, we've got our rad brackets in. I'm now just going to nip them all up. Right, because these walls are a bit funny, slurpity. Made by the good wife. The good wife! Right, let's pop these on. Funny enough, these are the first brackets that they've ever got that don't have those little things in them that protect them from clicking. You usually have a little thing that you pop in the cradle. So if you've got them with your particular radiator, I do recommend you pop them in there now. Tell you what, this one's going all right. Give me my impact driver. Have you ever seen such a small radiator be held up by such large screws? Because I'm going to say that's quite unusual. Don't want to go too tight either because this wall's dot and dab. And if you do that, if you go too tight with a dot and dab rat, rat wall, what you tend to do is pull in the actual uh, plasterboard that the guys are putting earlier and they wouldn't be very happy with you, believe me. So you're best off just getting everything nipped up by hand. You know then you're not going to go completely crackers. Make little adjustments to them all. Pop your buble on there. You should be able to sit your buble in the cradle and see that it's level. If it's not level, which at the moment we're just out a tiny bit. Right, now we are at a point where with any luck we should be able to hang our rad on this wall. Moment of truth, guys. So, let's whip around. Look how big she is. You like the way I've chosen the big radiator to do this demonstration on? There we go. Beautifully installed. God, I love my job sometimes. Right, okay. So now, the beast is hung up there. All good. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on a nice little stop motion and we're going to pipe this up in front of you and you're going to enjoy every minute of it. You think about the tools we needed for this, all we needed was a little tape measure, pipe cutter, a decent drill, pair of adjustables, couple of spirit levels that you trust, and that's pretty much it. You're already there, you're, you're halfway through to getting this job completed. So there you go, guys, all done. We've got this lovely little rad plugged in and working, it's absolutely happy. Got the valves on, we've piped it up, and I've shown you how to hang it. If this video has helped you out, then please comment and like this video. Please subscribe to us and follow us on Snapchat, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where we do loads and loads of plumbing disasters. Anyway, thanks ever so much for watching today, guys. And remember, there's one thing y'all gonna do, that's whole time.